Hello everyone. In this video, we will study the chapter 11 of class 4th mathematics that is tables and chairs. So first we are reading about Shyama's garden. Now Shyama has planted sunflowers, rose marigold plants in her garden as we can see. Now she has planted them in three flower beds. Her garden looks like this. So see how I planted 18 plants in one flower bed. Each flower bed has a different arrangement. See how the roses are planted. Now 18 is 6 into 3. So there are 6 rows with 3 plants each. Now what are the ways in which the sunflower and marigold are planted? And we need to answer it. So 18 is 2 into 9. So there are 2 rows in, with, uh, in this 9 plants each. And 18 is 3 into 6. So there are 3 rows with 6 plants each in the case of sunflowers as well as the roses as we can see. So you too can make your own garden. Draw a garden showing flower beds with 48 plants. Each row should have the same number of plants. Now what you need to do is you also need to make your own garden. Now what you exactly have to do is each row should have the same number of plants. So what you can do is you can also find the number in number of rows you will make so that the same number of plants are made. Now when we re uh, read the number 48, we know that 8 5s are 40 and 8 6 is 48. So if we make 8 rows of 6 uh, plants each, then each row will have the same number of plants and 48 plants will also be covered. So this is how you need to do it. Now Bhima made a shelf for 30 jars. This is a long shelf with two of them. So here we can see that it was a long shelf with 30 jars and as there were two racks, so 15 of them in each. Now I do not do the multiplication of 7. So the, uh, Bunty said so he does not know the multiplication of 7. To that Guddu replied, I know the table still 5 but there is an easy trick. I can make the table of 7 with the tables of 2 and 5. So you, uh, some of you might be knowing the table till 5, some of you might know the table till 4 and some of might, you also know the table of 7 but those who don't know, not an issue. You can make the table of 7 with a table of 2 and 5. So if we write the table of 2 over here, that is 2 1s are 2, 2 2s are 4, 2 3s are 6, 2 4s are 8, 2 5s are 10, 2 6s are 12, 2 7s are 14, 2 8s are 16, 2 9s are 18 and 2 10s are 18. 20 and then in the same way we write the table of 5 as well it's a 5 and the 5 5 2 is a 10 5 3 is a 15 5 4 is a 20 5 5 is a 35 sorry 5 and the 5 5 2 is a 10 5 3 is a 15 5 4 is a 20 5 5 is a 25 5 6 is a 30 5 7 is a 35 5 8 is a 40 5 9 is a 45 and finally 5 10 is a 50. So we have written a table of 2 and 5. Now what we need to do is we need to make the table of 7. So table of 7 is like this. First I'll write it. 7 1s are 7. 7 2s are 14. 7 3s are 21. 7 4s are 28. 7 5s are 35. 7 6 are 42. 7 7s are 49. 7 8s are 56. 7 9s are 63. And 7 10s are is 70. Now what you have to do is to make the table of 7, we added the tables of 2 and 5. Suppose 2 2s are is 4 while 5 2s are is 10. We added 10 and 4 and we got 14. If 2 4s are is 8 and 5 4s are is 20, we added 20 and 8, we got 28 and that is 7 Forza is 28. So now Bunty was excited about it. He said, so we can make the table of 7 with the tables of 4 and 3 as well. So what now? What you will do now is write the table of 4 and 3. I'll do it for you. 4 1s are 4, 4 2s are 8, 4 3s are 12, 4 4s are 16, 4 5s are 20, 4 6s are 24, 4 7s are 28, 4 8s are 32, 4 9s are 36 and 4 10s are 40. Then we write the table of 3. 3 1s are 3, 3 2s are 6, 3 3s are 9, 3 4s are 12, 3 5s are 15, 3 6s are 18, 3 7s are 21, 3 8s are 24, 3 9s are 27 and 3 10s are 30. So now while making the table of 7, if we see again that 4 2s are 8, 
by 3 2 is 6. If we add 8 and 6, how much we get? It's 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. The number 14 and as we can see 7 twos are is 14. So this is how you can find the tables of larger numbers also for now and as you'll go in earlier classes you'll start learning them. Now how many cats? Some of Gayatri's cats were playing in a box. When she tried to count all she could see were legs. She counted 28 legs. So how many cats are there in the box? Now 8 legs means 2 cats. So 12 legs means, now if 8 leg is 2 cats, that is, we divided 8 by 2. That, so the answer was 4. That means 1 cat has 4 legs. In this case, how much do 12 legs mean? So if we divide 12 by 4, we get 3. So the answer will be 3 cats. Now if there are 4 legs, there will be 1 cat. If there are 8 legs, there will be 2 cats. If there are 12 legs, there will be 3 cats. If there are 16 legs, there will be 4 cats. So 28 legs mean, now we will divide it by 2. So 2 ones are is 2 and 2 fours are is 8. So there will, now what I did wrong. I am talking about cats and I divided by 2. But the cats actually have 4 legs. So we need to divide 28 by 2. 4. So we know 4 fives are 20, 4 6 are 24, 4 sevens are 28. So 28 legs means 7 cats in all. So now we have helped below so she can count her cats now. So she has kept his chickens in a box and he counted 28 legs. So how many legs are there? So now what happened? She kept chickens in a box and there were 28 legs in all. So now she was confused that how many chickens are there. Now in the case of cats, cats had 4 legs each. But the chicken only has 2 legs. So if there are 28 legs, we need to divide it by 2. So it's 1 and 4. Now here the answer will be 14. There will be 14 chickens because the number of legs is 28. Similarly, if Leela has not gone to school for 21 days, for how many weeks is she absent from the school? We know that one week has 7 days. So we will divide 21 by 7. Now this will be like this and we know 7 threesa is 21. So she is missing the school from 3 weeks. Now this is how when we see that a frog jumps 3 steps at a time starting from 0. So count the jumps he has taken to reach 27. Now 3 steps at a time. So 27 will be divided by 3 and the answer will be 9 jumps. Similarly for the frog you need to complete the rest of the questions so that your concepts are clear. Then we have seashells. Now Dhruv lives near the sea. He thought of making necklaces for his three friends. He looked for seashells the whole day. He collected 112 seashells by evening. So he had many different and colorful and shiny shells now. So I'll make a necklace of 28 shells. Will these shells be enough to make necklaces for all my friends? So if he said he took 28 shells for one necklace, now 112 minus 28 will be 84. So now he was left with 84 shells. Again, he took 28 more shells for the second necklace. So now what you need to do is you need to say how many shells are left now. So we need to subtract 28 from 84 again. So if it's 84 minus 28, from 8 we take a carry over to 4. Now that's 14 minus Eight. That will be 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. So here we'll have 6. On the other side, as we have taken 1 from 8, so it will be 7. Now 7 minus 2 will give you 5. And here what was the number? We subtracted 14. We subtracted 8 from 14. So the number was 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. So the answer is 56. Similarly, you need to multiply and subtract and find the answers for the rest of the questions. Then you have some try these questions in your textbook which you need to do so that your concepts are clear. I'll do one for you. So Kannu made a necklace of 17 she shells. How many such necklaces can be made using 100 sea shells? Now if one necklace requires 17 sea shells, we need to say that how many necklaces can be made from 100 such kind of 
shells. Now, what we need to do is number of she uh, she cells used in two necklaces will be two into seventeen. That is. Thirty-four. Similarly, the number of seashells used in six necklaces will be six into seventeen. That will make six sevens are forty-two. Two will be written here. Four will be carried. Six sevens are six plus four is ten. So the answer will be hundred and two. So hundred and two shells are required to make six necklaces. But the total number of shells are present here are hundred. So Kannu can only make five necklaces out of hundred. Shells. Now this is how you will do the rest of the questions. Then we are talking about Gangu sweets. So Gangu is making sweets for Eid. He has made a tray of eighty laddus. So please pack four laddus in a box. I need twenty-three small boxes. So are the sweets in the tray enough to pack twenty-three small boxes? Now if one small box contains four laddus. How many laddus will twenty three such boxes contain? So if we multiply twenty three by four, four into three will give us twelve. We write two here and one will be carried. Now four into two will give us eight and here will be nine. As the answer will be ninety two laddus will be needed to make twenty three such boxes, but the laddus made are only eighty. So no, they are not complete. And how many much are needed? So we will subtract eighty from ninety-two, and the answer will be twelve. So twelve more laddus are needed. Now Gangu also has a bigger box in uh, boxes to pack, which he packs twelve laddus. In how many boxes does he need for packing sixty laddus? If one box has twelve laddus, then how much for sixty laddus? If we divide sixty by twelve now, so the answer will be five. That is twelve fives are is sixty. Thus, he'll need five such boxes. Then you have practice time questions using the same method of multiplication and division, and you need to complete them to clear your concepts. Then we'll be talking about children and their grandfather. So what happens here is. Rashi, she, uh, Sima, Bridul, Rohit, and Lokesh asked their grandfather to give them money for the fair. So he said, "I have seventy rupees in my pocket. Tell me how to share money among all of you. If you are right, you get this money." So Rashi and Sima thought for a while and said, "We know how to do seventy divided by five. So what happens now? They'll divide seventy by five. As I have been telling you the method of division, now I'll tell you more clearly. We write seventy here." We make this column of division. We write five there. Now, firstly, we look at the digit that is the on the corner most digit. That's seven. So five into one is five. So we'll write one on the top and five over here. Now seven minus five will give you two. When you take out the zero here, it's twenty, and we know that five four za is twenty. So we can. Cross it. Now, what happens is this is how we'll have fourteen as the answer. So, fourteen five zero is seventy. But so they can have fourteen rupees each. But now, what they need to do is, if they want to, uh, so uh, so they'll have fourteen rupees each. But for an easier method, what you can do is you can write seventy here divided by five. The simplest calculation is that five into ten will give you fifty. This is in your book, so you can use this method. So five here, you will write ten on the top. Seventy minus fifty, you will have twenty. So after getting ten rupees each, twenty will be still left. Now next, what you can do is, if it's twenty, you add ten plus four, that is five. Four is a twenty, and the answer will be zero. So each one of them will get fourteen rupees. Another method. We are again have another method for it. Now, if it's seventy divided by five, what we can do is we can write. Uh, suppose it's uh, but Mridul and Lokesh have this method. So what they do, they first to multiply five into five, that is seventy minus twenty-five, and they get forty-five. Then they do it by three again, and then they get fifteen, and then they again do it by three. It will be a long method, so try to make the method short and crisp, crisp, so that you can have an accurate answer for it. Then you'll have some few division questions which you need to do it on your own, so that you can clear your concept. You'll have story problems as well as numerical problems. I'll solve two to three questions of division here, so that your concept is clear. Suppose it's sixty-five divided by five. 
either you can do is 5 tens are is 60 so you can write 60 here and then 5 you are left with but what you exactly need to do is now you cannot take out again those that 5 from here so for the easy one you can do is if it's 5 ones are 5 6 minus 5 will give you 1 here you take out the 5 here it's 15 and 5 into 3 will give you 15 this is how you can do it and then the story problems there are 35 students in seven classes so this is basically something else i'm talking about but yes you can learn the method of division from this also so each row has the same number of students so 75 students in seven rows so if we divide 35 by 7 we know 5 is the answer so five students in each row but for this you have to make the questions the question you can make is how many students will be sitting in one row similarly you need to make questions for the situations given in your textbook and solve the questions for the questions given in your textbook so i hope the method of division by following many techniques is now clear to you along with multiplication addition and subtraction so please practice the questions given in your textbook to clear your concepts more with this we are done with the chapter that's all thank you